Ford, the car of James Weaver, Andy Wallace and Perry McCarthy rejoins the field, so that's great news. Now I wonder if they've changed the gearbox in that time, well, they may well have done. Oh, oh yes, that was yes. a coming together there, that was a clear coming together, he touched on the back of the car, and that, it, it was almost a nudge, he looked if he was going to go sideways on the grass, then we don't know what, quite what would have happened, but they definitely touched. And he's coming back, and it, it really is, it's, uh, it's a sprint race, it's just who can get to the line, it's just amazing. Yeah, that was actually, he was just hitting the back of one of the back markers there, that's the uh, Auto X uh, machine of uh, the Japanese driver. I think that they just made a little bit of contact. Now, I've just got to hope that they haven't done any damage well, particularly to the, the winglets, front of the Mercedes. You know, with the winglets on that car, which are always fairly delicate, um, we can see they're actually in, 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 in place there. But the line of those, obviously, they would be uh, very uh, opposed to having those knocked off. Yeah. Yujiro Tarada, Frank Freon, and Robin Donovan. Let's take another look here. You can just see that, that little bit of contact. Oh! Not quite contact. No. Oh, and I wouldn't know. Lucky, very lucky, and also some tyre smoke. So I don't know whether a tiny flat spot, probably not enough to to amount to that. And I can tell you now that that second Toyota is starting to attack. The man who lost out in that classic Le Mans situation that you were describing uh, before was clearly Martin Brundley. Dropped back a little bit. Measure of the speed he's got that he's attacking again. He's getting.